From the incredible radio exploits of Doc Savage, written by Lester Dent as Kenneth Robeson, presented by the DocCon players at Rob Smalley's DocCon 12, Chandler, Arizona, November 13th, 2009. Ladies and gentlemen, Systex is presenting another episode from the life of Doc Savage, the man who helps others who are in danger or in trouble. That's right. This man, Mom, tried to keep me from coming in. Ah, right, Doc. I was just trying to find out what she's got in her mind. She says she... I'm Joan Allen, secretary to John McDavid. The art connoisseur? Yes, John McDavid collects paintings. He collects money, too, the old tightwad. He's the guy... You know, I, I, I know that Doc Hunt, uh is something that we all look forward to every year. Uh, it's something that I look forward to, and it's you know my privilege to, to be able to be your host this year. So uh, we have a, uh, an interesting agenda. I think that was a good thing that he did that. That he added some depth to the character. That you know he did, that he uh, he did have some family linkage there, and I think it was good that he brought Pat into the the story line. I think that that um, added some some other dimension there, and. You know, it, it, at the time, I think women were going through some, some big transformations in their roles and, uh, you know, uh, being able to do things that maybe their mothers weren't able to do and uh, a little more bold and, uh, you know, you had, had women like Amelia Earhart and, uh, you know, there's just a, a whole slew. Paul could probably talk about this better than I could um, in the 20s and 30s, uh, you know, where these, these women were or do things that uh, maybe that they couldn't do or, or, or wouldn't do before. So I think that that, that was uh, a good introduction. I think it's appropriate that we honor uh, Pat Savage, and I think it's appropriate that we honor all the female characters um, in the stories. So in honor of that, I uh, I went through and read read pretty much all all the uh, the stories with Pat and pulled out what she brought to the table. And, uh, you know, as, as we've stated, <coughs> she pretty much started out as the interloper where she would just show up. And, and uh, actually, as, as the stories progressed, especially the post-war, uh, she did, her character did, did evolve. A couple mentions, slight mentions of her and, uh, of, uh, her and Mom. You know, being taught the uh, the mind language or uh, her flying abilities. Uh, extreme fortune of of uh, having correspondence with Bob Larkin. Now, how this all came about was uh, I've had, I have an ongoing uh, research I've been doing on Fred Pfeiffer. And when I get, get a hold of some of these people, they say, oh, you need to contact Bob Larkin. He really knew Pfeiffer real well. I'm like, well, that would be great, but, you know, how do I do that? So uh, in 2008, when I was at the Windy City Pulp and Paperback Show, I'm in the art room, and I'm actually standing right in front of Larkin's They Died Twice. And, and that thing is just amazing in person. You know, you're just standing there going like this, and I've got this guy from La Plata that I met, um, Bill Thinnis, and he's standing next to me, and I'm looking at his painting, he goes, huh, I just got a call from Bob Larkin. And I went, huh? I go, do you have his phone number? <laughs> and then he goes, yeah, do you want it? I'm thinking, well, I'm sure Bob Larkin doesn't want everybody giving his phone number. Most of you probably have not seen Bob Larkin in person, so here he is. Later, I get this email from this guy in Florida or Alabama, I don't remember which, where he was at. And his name is Scotty Phillips. And Scotty sends us, he goes, I didn't know anybody else in the whole world like Pfeiffer. I love Pfeiffer. So we became, we, we have a great friendship online. I've never met him in person. Uh, but then I find out that he does paintings. So he will commission paintings. There, that, this is my painting that's in my house. This is one he did. You know, he's got clients that sometimes ask him to do things. He hates doing the lettering. 
Oh, and I would be remiss in saying that uh, he is a good friend of Billy's. Although there some in there are already good friends. I thought I'd come up and uh, pass one to you guys. There's some beautiful work in there. But you want a lot of cars. I don't know if you like virtual things. Sure. Yeah, there's a couple of things. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out. 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 I'm sure a lot of you have heard of like fantasy baseball, right? where you come up with your own teams. Um, Jay's article in last year's Book of Brahms gave me the idea. What about doing like fantasy Doc Savage movie casting? Steve Reeves, he was like 6'2 six, like six or 6'3, six I think. Uh, Clint Walker, I've got a couple of Clint Walkers. That seems to be a popular choice. Charlton Heston, Aldo Ray as Monk, Basil Rathbone as Ham. Nice. Oh, I like this, John, John Carradine as Johnny. Mm -hmm. Rennie Broderick Car Crawford before he was fat. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Rennie is long time. People chose The Rock for a modern cast for Doc. It's going to get us back on track. I was going to uh, play my other video for you guys. Uh, this is a video that I did. It's dedicated to uh, all those who love all things Doc Savage. So I'm going to be talking about uh, the Doc Savage comic book appearances, but not so much about Doc Savage and comic books, but more about the the, the men who wrote the stories. They're really nice images, and, and I think, to me, that, that's the kind of stuff that could grab them. And, they, they, and the Millennium Comics did a little bit. Frankly, I have to say, I love the black and whites, and I like the, the four-issue miniseries that uh, Dark Horse did with Gary Gianni. I, mm -hmm. I, the internal art was a little weak, but I love the storyline. The thought covers it, were great. The covers were fabulous. Well, you're going back to the storyline again. We're different. <laughs> Everybody say hi. 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 Mm. Hello. <laughs> Big book of bronze like too. Jesus. Yeah. 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 It was an absolute yeah. blast yeah. to put together this year because a lot of people participated and decent quality stuff came in. Artwork was coming in. <laughs> what did he do? Was he a I believe he's a graphic artist. Oh, graphic artist. I don't know. I think he is. I think he is. I don't know specifically, wow. but... Doubles. Oh, yeah, they're they're off, uh, out of the raffle. I don't have any of the doubles. I have nobody on it. Yeah, which, yeah. Which now, we're, no, now we're cooking. We're out of um, I, I wrote this first uh, Pulp Heroes book, and there are so many characters and such a big timeline. When I started the second book, I realized it's difficult to keep track of everything. So what I did is I went to an Excel spreadsheet and started putting in timelines and ages for all the, the characters. And I realized it was growing beyond that, so I went into Illustrator and created this uh, timeline chart. Throughout recorded history, mankind has produced heroes, both real and literary. These heroes are Sir Galahad and Doc Savage. Coincidentally, there are similarities in the careers of Sir Galahad and the Round Table and Clark Savage of New York City. And we'll take a look at a few of them here. The uh, greatest task ever undertaken by Galahad was the quest for the grail. I, I wanted to kind of wrap up um, the dot com by reading something that was out of an article that I wrote for the Bronze Gazette some time ago. And uh, just to leave you with this thought, it says that uh, we are not professional event planners. We're people like you with jobs that demand 50 to 60 hours a week, families that have to be cared for personal obligations that must be met, and hobbies and interests outside of Doc Savage. Regardless, we make the time to organize the Doc Con because we believe it is important to have a personal connection with other fans. In the past, we lived our Doc Savage existence in solitude, and as adults now, we choose not to go it alone anymore. This is a strong feeling that drives our efforts. For us, we have found that there is no substitute for the excitement and exhilaration found in a room full of Doc fans in no other place and through no other medium do we feel so understood. This is our great reality. We felt this so strongly that we have tried to make the same available to you by creating the Doc Con. And with that, I would like to close the uh, program for Doc Con 2009. Thank you all for coming. Here, here. Nice. Thank you.